Ever since the beta ended, I just wanted to play more and I'm having withdrawals. But we have to wait till lunch. So to cope with this, I just want to talk about Diablo 4. Here are some tips you can keep in mind when you first step into Sanctuary. Each core stat will have universal effects for each class. Core stats will always give these falling bonuses. Each point in strength will give you one point of armor. Each point in intelligence will give you 0.05% resistance to everything. Each point in willpower will give you extra 0.1% more healing when healing and 0.25% more overpower damage. Each point in dexterity will give you 0.025% dodge chance. On top of that, there will be different bonus focuses depending on which class you're using. The classes will have different focuses for each core stat that does damage, crit, and resource generation. The rogue's main damage stat is dexterity, while for everyone else, dexterity gives critical strike chance. The Barbarian's main damage stat is Strength, while the Rogue uses Strength for resource generation. Everyone else besides those two don't get any extra bonuses for Strength. The Druid's main damage stat is Willpower. While the Rogue does not receive a bonus from Willpower, everyone else Willpower give resource generation. For Necromancer and Sorcerer, Intelligence is their main damage stat. The Barbarian does not receive any bonuses for intelligence. The Rogue's critical strike chance is increased by intelligence and the Druid gets more resource generation for intelligence. Silent chests are scattered around the sanctuary in which you need whispering keys to open them, in which you get from the gamblers by using oboes as the currency. Oboes are obtained through the world events. Remember, when you teleport to town and go back to the world, you can possibly be spawned in a new instance. So the silent chest that you saw while running and then you want to go back and buy keys could change to another chest when you come back. So this refers to other world events as well. So make sure to carry the keys before you head out. While wandering throughout the land, you might encounter statues with a purple circle in front of them. These emo statues, you go up to them and talk to the statue to figure out what emote to use based on their text. You can get potions or a temporary buff from them. You know, you can refresh instances, dungeon instances. Sometimes it's faster to go to the dungeon, just do the first part, clearing the elites, and then reset the dungeon to rinse and repeat. So in order to do this, you have to go back to town, then open your journal, which is usually from your map. You can just press Q if you're on PC uh, while you're on the world map. Then there's a reset button on the bottom of that journal. All your equipment applies to all your attacks, including legendary affixes. You can use them technically as stat sticks, if you want to think of it that way. Remember, you can only have one legendary affix of each kind active at once. If you have two of the same ones, it will take the higher one and the lower one will be like grayed out and disabled. Not all legendary affixes can be in any gear slot. Legendary affixes are broken into categories and depending on the category, it dictates which gear you can have that fixed on as well as how effective that the fix will be. The only exception is the amulet gear slot. It can take in any legendary fix into that slot with a 50% effectiveness compared to its base state. So for the offensive legendary affix, they can be slotted into gloves, one-handed weapons and rings, and it can also be slotted into a two-handed weapon for double the effectiveness. For defensive legendary affix, you can place them into helmets, chests, and pants. For resource legendary affixes, you can slot them into helmets and rings. For utility legendary affixes, you can put them onto helmets, chests, boots, and gloves. And for mobility legendary affix, you can place them into boots. Sockets are pretty rare on equipment, but you can socket them in the jeweler but you need a crafting item that could be dropped from the world boss. So whenever you're prepped and strong enough so you don't be a burden to your teammates, make sure to encounter the world boss when it's available. The times aren't solid yet for release, so we'll see once we get the game. Uh, world bosses also drop a bunch of legendaries. <laughs> Let's talk about fortified. There's a state in which you are fortified, and that happens when you have equal or more fortified life than your current life. So Fortify slowly goes down when you're out of combat for a few seconds and there's specific skills or abilities or even items that actually give you Fortify. So when you're in a Fortify state, by default you have an extra 10% damage reduction. When you're attacked while being fortified, both your Fortify HP and your HP will go down the amount including with the 10% damage reduction. There are ways to increase this amount via gems, equipment. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything unless it's for overpower damage. 
Overpower, it's a stat that's fixed at 3% chance. It allows you to randomly deal more damage. There is no way to increase this chance of it happening, but there's a way to have it guarantee overpower. For example, Pulverize has a node that actually guaranteed overpower every 10, 10 seconds after you use a Pulverize. Overpower damage is your damage adding your life and whatever 4 to 5 life you have. Overpower will appear as teal and if you crit as well it appears orange the unstoppable buff it removes all currently control impairing effects on you for example if you're stunned grabbed frozen etc and you use a skill that grants you the unstoppable state you escape that crowd control you won't be cc'd anymore let's talk about the vulnerability debuff some skills can give a debuff called vulnerable that you can put on an enemy which indicates by them having their life bar highlighted in purple when this happens at a base they will take 20 percent more damage from anything <laughs> this is mostly for bragging rights but after you complete challenges and other activities you can get titles to equip them you go to the inventory page click on the profile button then click on the edit button then you can edit your title here with a mix of prefix and suffix you can also change your emblem that shows up on your character bar. All these tips mentioned are based on my research and beta experience. I don't think it will change much at launch, but who knows until the game releases. I hope to see you all in Sanctuary and please check out my stream on twitch.tv slash Especially when the game drops, I might do a game giveaway during the early access launch, so come by. Later days.